Greetings Raiders, this is Vespa, and welcome to my guide for Deluber and Regine Savage. This video will be focusing on the mini-bosses of DRS, Dahu and the Bojan Phantom. So, let's get started. Dahu starts off with the reverberating roar, which will summon three sets of ground AoEs under random players. He will then charge in the direction he is facing. The second time, he will cast a Fire Breath a large conal AoE, so try to stay fairly close to him. Non-targetable adds will spawn on the edge of the arena and will charge, doing a line AoE. The boss will then use Spit Flame, with four random players getting numbered markers or limit cut style markers above the head. Not only does this cause moderate damage, but it will also kill any adds that are hit by the blast. As such, you want to hit the adds with this AoE to create safe spots for a later mechanic. Most groups will have numbered waymarks positioned in the arena, so the numbered players should go to their respective waymarks. Now we have the left-sided shockwave and the right-sided shockwave, which will do a cleave on the respected side of the boss, and then it will immediately cleave the opposite side, which can be easily sidestepped or outranged. Feral Howl will then knock back all players and stagger them. Knockback communities do not work in DRS, so you will need to position yourself to get knocked back into a safe spot where an ad was killed earlier. This is because the surviving adds will use Hunter's Claw, causing a circle AoE underneath them. If you have a gap closer and time it correctly, you will be able to dash back to the boss before being stunned. Dahu will then cast Fire Breath again, the Konal AoE, but now he will be rotating. Adds will then spawn into the arena and tether onto the main tank. Everyone can AoE these down while the main tank uses their cooldowns. Some mechanics will begin to repeat here, but with the next knockback mechanic your positioning may change. This is because two tanks will get flares. These are proximity markers that will do more damage to you the closer you are to them. As such, most pugging groups have the tanks take the northern safe spots, whilst everyone else takes the southern safe spots. And that is Dahu. The chests here will drop either fragments of loss or fragments of deception. Next we will look at the Bojan Phantom. Once you reach the Phantom, it should be noted that from this point onwards, the thrice come ruin debuff changes. In fact, it changes to twice come ruin instead. This means that you can only mess up mechanics once, because upon receiving a second stack, you will get doom and die. Having a player assigned to use Lost Spanish is recommended for this encounter, as it increases the damage this miniboss will take by 25%. The Phantom starts off with Malediction of Agony, a raid wide AoE. Feel free to pre mitigate this. The boss will then cast Weave Miasma, which will summon 8 indicators at the northern end of the arena. These are arranged in two rows of four. There are a few rules to follow here. The square symbol indicates that the entire column will be hit by an AoE three times. The circle is the puddle AoE that travels down the column, and the orange donut symbol indicates a donut AoE will go down the column, which is also two columns wide. The bottom row of symbols and their corresponding AoEs will go out first, and then the top row will follow. So for the first Weave Miasma, the safe spot will usually be in A or D, starting in the north. To figure out which is safe, look at the bottom row of indicators and find the orange donut symbol. Then find the circle AoE marker above this. This will be your starting point. In the example here, there are two donut symbols. However, in the C row, Above the donut marker is the square marker, indicating that the whole column will be attacked immediately after the donut AoEs go out. Therefore, we must take the row with the donut symbol on the bottom row, and the circle symbol on the top row. This is because there will be time to move into the new safe zone in the middle columns while the circle AoE travels south towards us. Also remember not to run into the death wall when going south. The main tank can pull the boss between the two middle columns, 
so no matter what pattern comes next, everyone will be able to keep up time. Next is Invert Miasma, which will reverse the order that the indicators go off, which means the top row of AoEs will go off first, followed by the bottom. After this, the Phantom will return to the middle of the arena and become untargetable and begin casting Malediction of Ruin. Ads will then begin spawning into the arena in three waves. DPS down the red ghosts and heal the white ghosts to full. Most groups will assign white mages to Benediction one ghost each and heal whatever white ghosts remain. Once these are down, you must interrupt the phantom's cast or you will wipe the raid. For the next weave miasma, the phantom will also cast summon, which will summon a ghost at either the northern or southern end of the arena. The ghost will knock back players nearly the entire length of the arena, so get into position relative to the indicators, also taking into consideration if the phantom used invert to reverse the order. File Wave is an untelegraphed conal AoE. Make sure you are not in front of the Phantom here. Next is Ice Spikes, where the boss will cast a buff on itself, which will slow players that attack it. Players can sheath their weapons to play safe while Lost Dispel goes out to remove the buff from the boss. And lastly, we have Excruciation, which is a tank buster. After this, the mechanics begin to repeat as there is no enrage. After the Phantom is defeated, you can pick up your chest, which has the chance to drop the Gambler Essence, which is great for some meme runs. Be sure to let your Perception tanks go ahead first, as there are some nasty traps ahead, and you must at all costs avoid activating the mini trap, which the raid will need to use to get to the Stigma Luck Lord encounter. Just as a heads up, I won't be doing a guide for Trinity Avowed, as there's a perfect guide by Evervale, which I will leave a link in the description box to. So my next video will be going over to Stigma Lock Lord instead. I hope you found this guide useful, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to do so in the comment box below. Thank you for watching and take care.